This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by our friends over at Ease, the leading online on-demand marketplace for legal California medical marijuana delivery. Ease's business model is to connect top medical marijuana dispensaries with customers who need quick and easy delivery. Their beautifully designed website offers customers a one-stop shop for the best local medical marijuana products for delivery while giving their dispensary partners a powerful new line of revenue. To learn more about Ease and to place your own order for delivery, assuming you're a registered medical marijuana patient in the Golden State, head over to Ease.com, which is spelled E-A-Z-E, Ease.com. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Thursday, November 30th, 2017, and you're tuned in to episode 383 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story of the day brings us out to Washington State, where yesterday the State Liquor and Cannabis Board released details for a proposed plan to legalize the home grow of adult-use marijuana. Washington State is the only adult-use state to ban private citizens from growing small amounts of non-medical cannabis in their home. Ben Adlin over at Leafly has an excellent write-up of the plan, which presents three options for moving forward. The first in which the status quo of banned adult-use cannabis is maintained, another that features a heavy-handed amount of control by the state, and a third option that shifts more of the responsibility for overseeing home grow to local governments. This is definitely a good story to click over to for all the details. Scott's miracle Grow continues its foray into the world of cannabis cultivation with the recently announced acquisition of Canadian firm Can Filters, a company specializing in air filtration systems used to grow marijuana. According to New Cannabis Ventures, the overall deal is worth $72.2 million, bringing the company's industry investment total up to $565 million. Those investments seem to be paying off as their Hawthorne division, under which they organize their marijuana brands, has been a healthy and growing profit maker now responsible for 11% of the company's overall sales. Our final top story of the day are the marijuana policy comments made yesterday during a press conference by U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who, as a quick reminder, is currently under investigation for colluding with the Russians against the United States, already having lied to Congress a number of times. Sessions, who has been coy in the past over his agency's plans to disrupt state legal marijuana, was asked about the possibility of cracking down on states like California and Colorado and said, quote, In fact, we're looking at that very hard right now. We had a meeting yesterday and we talked about it at some length. It's my view that the use of marijuana is detrimental and we should not give encouragement in any way to it. And it represents a federal violation, which is in the law and subject to being enforced, unquote. The attorney general also said that the Department of Justice was working on a, quote, rational policy, unquote, for marijuana control, with a DOJ spokesperson later offering up no comment on what that might actually look like. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out on headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, Ease, the one-stop shop website for legal California medical marijuana delivery. You've heard me talk a lot now about how Ease makes the buying process better for California legal medical marijuana patients, but what I haven't mentioned yet is the most valuable thing in Ease's corporate quiver, and that's the treasure trove of cannabis consumer data that flows through their digital fingertips every day. Their understanding of their customers' cannabis buying behaviors and their industry needs and desires are second to none. Ease, being the smart and pragmatic company that it is, decided to use this aggregated and anonymized trove of data in a number of clever ways. One of my favorite stories is how they approached the city of Los Angeles during a time when the city was considering dialing back the opening hours of dispensaries. Ease was able to show them that most of their medical marijuana deliveries happened between 7 and 10 p.m., so the proposed closing hour of 6 p.m. would have left most of LA's medical marijuana patients out of luck. That bit of real-time information and wisdom helped convince the LA City Council to abandon the proposed 6 p.m. closing. To get a look at how Ease is packaging up their data in other helpful ways, swing on over to their blog over at ease.com slash blog. That's spelled E-A-Z-E dot com slash blog. All right, time for the Blitz. 
Dispensaries in the city of San Francisco won't have legal adult use marijuana available for sale on January 1st as Amendment 64 takes effect. But after a meeting on Tuesday of the city's board of supervisors, it's looking pretty good that sales could start up not too long into the new year. During the meeting, the Board of Supervisors approved a number of regulations for the adult use industry that, if quickly approved by Mayor Ed Lee, could go into effect on January 5th. Open this one up for the full read. Johnny Green over at Weed News picked up on a story of a letter sent on Tuesday by 66 members of Congress to the Republican and Democratic leadership of the U.S. House and Senate, urging them to keep in place the Rohrabacher Blumenauer Amendment, the federal legislation that prevents the Department of Justice from spending any money persecuting people who follow state medical marijuana laws. The letter was signed by a bipartisan group of lawmakers headed by Representatives Earl Blumenauer of Oregon and Dana Rohrabacher of California, who I think it should be noted is also suspected of some shady Russian dealings. Leafly has an excellent long-form piece up looking at the taxation situation in California's adult use and medical system as Proposition 64's start date approaches. In short, there's a lot of well-founded fears in the Golden State that high taxes, in some cases upwards of 45% of the retail price, could help the legacy illicit market thrive. This is another good one to open up for the full dive in. Jumping up north to Canada, we find a business atmosphere in the country's legal marijuana sector crackling with acquisition fever. Of particular note is the company Aurora Cannabis, who has been plowing tens of millions of dollars raised from investors into buying up new marijuana businesses. With a current war chest of more than $300 million and a stated hunger for more acquisitions, it's likely we'll be hearing a lot more about the company on future shows, and of Canadian mergers and acquisitions in general. The Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission is a couple of legislative actions away from receiving the money it requested from state lawmakers to fund their operations this year. Yesterday, the Massachusetts House budget writers released a proposed bill that would give the commission $2.7 million to pay for this year's operations. Medical marijuana patients in Pennsylvania will soon face the same restrictions on gun ownership that every other medical marijuana patient in the nation faces as their system comes online. I reported recently on the news out of Hawaii of the Honolulu Police Department sending letters to registered gun owners informing them of their need to turn in their weapons should they be a registered patient. LehighValley.com covered the issue in Pennsylvania and spoke to a number of law enforcement officials who confirmed that Keystone State patients won't be able to legally possess firearms. And finally for today, we have the news that Kellyanne Conway, President Vladimir Trump's favorite professional liar and media manipulator, has been tapped to lead his efforts combating the very real opioid health epidemic. Ms. Conway, who has zero background in drug policy reform and who has served as the president's primary media mouthpiece due to her eagerness to lie and obfuscate about his disastrous dumpster fire of an administration, will, quote, coordinate and lead the effort from the White House, unquote, according to Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who shared the news at the same press conference held yesterday that topped the show. So, in other words, the White House will continue their policy of ignoring the opioid epidemic, which kills more than 170 Americans each and every day. 170 people every single day. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, Ease, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.